perhaps uh, discuss with you a little bit as to where you go from here, where we go from here. Uh, I'd like to give a little bit of a roadmap or a blueprint of how other human rights cases and human rights causes have been successful and hope that uh, our experience with those other cases uh, can have some applicability uh, to the 1904-1908 genocide and your efforts to win some justice. Uh, in the cases that I've, I've worked on, uh, certainly one relevant one is the case of uh, uh, the Holocaust litigation against Germany and German industry, which ended in a comprehensive settlement uh, signed in the presidential uh, palace in uh, Berlin. And I would hope that uh, at some point in the not too distant future, uh, your representatives as well uh, can be there for a truly uh, just settlement. Uh, uh, but I must caution you that uh, Germany did not agree right away. <laughs> and it was a long and very difficult road. And also, we uh, also litigated with the French government and the French banks. Uh, around the same period of time. And uh, that settlement was signed in Washington at the U.S. State Department uh, with then-Secretary Madeleine Albright uh, present. And the reason why I mentioned that is I, I did not want to forget that uh, any effort to get true justice, reparations, restitution, acknowledgement, apology, and everything else that you are entitled to uh, is a complex task and must, in my view, and in my experience, be pursued at several different levels in several different avenues. Uh, first of all, uh, you need to continue to do what you've done so wonderfully today, which is in the court of public opinion, uh, in the press, the level of awareness uh, of the uh, genocide must be elevated. As you probably know, in uh, Germany, German textbooks, uh, as far as I know, I believe there is nothing about this in the German history books. And if, even though I practice in the area of human rights and Holocaust litigation, it was only really un uh, recently that I learned uh, about these events. So the court of public opinion, uh, scholarly studies, conferences are important uh, and is an essential part of the effort. However, uh, in my view, in my experience, uh, it is not enough. It's important but uh, in addition, it's like two pillars. You have the court of public opinion, and then you also must have the courts. Why shouldn't Germany or whatever government or peoples who have committed a genocide acknowledge it without uh, the threat of litigation and actual litigation? Yes, they should. Do they? No, not in my experience. Uh, and with regard to international tribunals and courts, uh, you have several opportunities and several variety of options to pursue. Uh, and you not, do not necessarily have to choose one. You can, prove, you can choose several and pursue your efforts on several different levels. I can tell you that um, as an American lawyer, practicing in the human rights area for over 41 years, uh, the U.S. courts uh, are open, if framed correctly, uh, to uh, these kinds of genocidal claims. In fact, at the origins of our country, you know, those of you, and many of you, I know, even uh, Namibians, many are now U.S. citizens, 
in our country, and it is our country, uh, in 1789, at the origins of our country, the first judiciary law of the United States uh, passed a, enacted a statute saying that any wrong in violation of the law of nations may be heard in the United States courts. And this was customary. This was called customary international law, that the courts of any civilized nation should be open to any claim of a violation of international law. Now back then, the primary concern actually was a North African problem. The Barbary pi pirates were raiding the U.S. shores and Mediterranean, and that was the primary concern. Now the violations of international law, at least the three fundamental violations, the big three are war crimes, crimes against humanity, and of course, uh, genocide. And uh, certainly from what I've heard, from what I've learned, from what I've been able to study recently, there is no serious question that uh, the events of 1904 uh, through 1908 in Namibia uh, fall into the category of uh, genocide. Uh, because as other speakers have indicated, it's not just uh, mass killings, but it's killings with an intent to eradicate or eliminate a people. In this case, two of the uh, in, uh, proud indigenous peoples of uh, Namibia. And uh, that was carried out in a number of ways which draw a very close parallel uh, to that of the uh, Jewish Holocaust in the 1930s and the 1940s as indicated, and I won't, without repeating what has been said before, uh, in addition to the mass extermination, for example, of, of, of Jews uh, in the late 30s and 1940s, uh, there was also an attempt, really, to eradicate a culture of a people and to subjugate uh, those who uh, were permitted to still live through slave labor, through forced labor, and ultimately in our settlement with Germany and German industry, it was not only a recognition that there needs to be reparations or restitution uh, to the families of the victims who died and those who survived, uh, but also um, reparations and restitution to those who were forced into uh, forced labor, slave labor, uh, and uh, victims of sexual, uh, sexual violence. Uh, the parallels are, are striking, and the, a, a comprehensive settlement should take into account uh, those aspects as well. Uh, in addition, uh, work I did, for example, with Native American peoples and tribes in Alaska, there's a cultural aspect as well. And I, I'm happy to see through the colorful dress and so forth that the, the culture, the culture uh, has survived. Um, but certainly there must have been significant damage done uh, in Namibia to the cultures in the attempt to eradicate not only the people, but their uh, cultural heritage, their artifacts, perhaps archaeological sites, religious sites, and others. And as part of a comprehensive settlement, uh, as a comprehensive uh, act of justice, uh, that must be acknowledged as well. And I mention that because at, at the end of the road, a settlement may take into account uh, a number of different facets. Uh, money is, of course, always important. With money, the communities can do a lot. However, uh, in the cultural area, I can draw some parallels to, the, for example, the settlement with the French government and the French uh, banks. Um, in the settlement with the French banks, uh, we tried to create, I'll call it a win-win situation. 
with the French. They didn't want to acknowledge that they were complicit with Nazis and Vichy France uh, in the eradication uh, of the Jews, uh, but they were willing to enter into a settlement which ultimately acknowledged their complicity that they aided and abetted the Nazis. But also, they wanted to get some credit, for example, to contributing to uh, Jewish museums, Jewish cultural institutions, and uh, I, I think I'm hearing uh, that the German government has been saying, hey, we've been helping out Namibia a lot, you know, foreign aid and other, other kinds of services, uh, and they also have uh, been attempting to obviously take a strong pro-humanitarian standpoint with the recent refugees in the Middle East, it might be an opportunity in an ultimate settlement whereby uh, a settlement could be reached where there would be a cultural, a contribution by Germany or German industry or Deutsche Bank, which played some role in 1904 to 1908. The German uh, railway companies who used uh, slave labor and forced labor uh, there should be a, a part of that settlement as well. But for example, in a uh, law school uh, where I have taught as an adjunct professor, Cardozo Law School in New York, uh, we have a Holocaust and Human Rights program which was funded by France and uh, the French banks. So we have a perpetually funded program which will go on, hopefully, in perpetuity. And uh, you might want to consider that at the end of the day, if you get there, that a settlement uh, may have a number of different aspects uh, to it. In addition, I'd like to uh, point out that uh, in response to arguments that you know this was a very long time ago, and this was the 20th century, but it was 1904, um, you have several very good responses to that. For example, uh, the Armenian Genocide of 1915 is very much in the news and it's very contemporaneous. I think even Pope Francis uh, mentioned it recently. And I can tell you, having been down and lobbying in Congress uh, not too many years ago for a resolution uh, uh, acknowledging the Armenian Genocide, it sent shivers down the spine of, of Turkish officials, and uh, they opposed it, but it was a very, very powerful thing. The Armenian Genocide has been recognized uh, by the European Union, so these are venues that you may well want to consider, the European Union, European Court of Human Rights, um, might not have standing there, but certainly a resolution in the European Union, uh, in Congress here. And I'd also like to point out that the settlement that we had with Germany and with France and other uh, Holocaust and human rights cases not only uh, involved private parties, but also the governments themselves, and that. Uh, those of you who are U.S. citizens, green card holders, and a number of you have been here for many years, your taxpayer dollars in part go to finance a Holocaust and Human Rights uh, office in the U.S. State Department and uh, also in the U.S. Treasury Department. And those have been strongly activated at times to participate in negotiations directly on a government-to-government -government, uh, basis, but not solely. I mean, I wasn't with the U.S. government at the time, but we'd have the U.S. State Department, we'd have the French or German um, uh, representatives of the government present, and then there would be attorneys like myself uh, and uh, other private stakeholders, I think I heard it described as, which is an excellent term, all around the table, 
And this is not only important that all parties, including indigenous uh, peoples who are primarily affected be there, in addition to governments. I don't want to interject myself into uh, Namibia politics, of which I, I know nothing, but I can tell you about uh, Romania, Hungary, and other governments which came to the table with Germany and said, look, we're the government. We represent all the people in our country, including the victims of the Holocaust, the slave laborers and forced laborers, and you give us a share of the pot of the settlement monies, and we'll make sure that we take care of the other people. <coughs> so, um, not that I read the Namibian papers all the time, but I, think, I think this is, uh, those of you who do probably know that there is a discussion going on, perhaps heated in Parliament right now, as to who represents uh, the uh, peoples, the tribes, the native groups, the indigenous groups who are directly affected, uh, which are not the majority of your country, uh, but are those who were directly affected uh, by the genocidal campaign of, of 1904 to 1908. So I just mention that to you as, as a word of caution. Yes, thank you. That uh, you and uh, in Alaska, for example, uh, there are state governments, there are federal governments, but we also have you know, tribal governments. And when we settled with Exxon over the oiling of a million acres of indigenous land, we made sure that the indigenous people themselves, their, their, their tribal uh, chiefs, the tribal communities at the village and regional level, were at the table and represented as well. So if someone tells you, don't worry, we're going to look after your interests, <laughs> you might want to make sure that you and your representatives are there at the table. Certainly, uh, uh, there are other forms as well, um, in addition to Congress uh, uh, and the State Department, the UN obviously, um, and European uh, community forums are, uh, are available to you. The Permanent Court of Arbitration at The Hague, where I spent some time a number of years ago, is one that would perhaps welcome an opportunity to hear a case such as yours. Uh, in any event, I think you have to uh, create the environment where it's inevitable and the German government, German industry, including, I would say, Deutsche Bank and the uh, successors to the railway company uh, who use the forced labor uh, should, be, should be named and, and focused on. Because unless you bring all those responsible to the table, and all of those, inclu including you, who have been damaged by it, unless you're all at the table and the world of public opinion is in your favor, then you will have the right dynamic to sit around that round table uh, spoken of before where a true, just, and lasting uh, peace and settlement can be achieved. Thank you very much.